Hi, a very good afternoon and a warm welcome to all of you. Uh, I really don't know whether this is the pre-lunch session or the post-lunch. Uh, for me, certainly it's pre-lunch. And uh, given that it's a Saturday for quite a few of you, I'm sure, who had some lazy brunches, this well could be a late lunch day for you. Uh, so I promise to keep it uh, as short as I can. But the topic is extremely interesting, as you would have already read. And Aishwarya actually gave you a peek sneak into... Um, uh, we're talking about uh, transformative shift in fixed income space, uh, giving leeway to alternate investments. And uh, while I will, you know, let the panelists do all of the talking uh, and I'm doing the easier job, but I think it's important for you to get the context set setting right uh, where we are in terms of the landscape of the India big picture. We are raring to go towards a $5 trillion economy. Uh, within that, if you see the performing credit of the private credit space, is close to about $50 billion. And you are seeing a phase where banks, mutual funds, NBFCs, as I call it, you know, unki jo hai, that is shifting gradually from wholesale towards the retail, uh, more granular lending business. And uh, of course, this is not out of cut, this is out of data. So, you know, if you see three years back, um, if you look at the large corporate exposure uh, as a proportion of, uh, you know, the bank's non-food credit portfolio, uh, that typically about 25, 26, so broadly about one fourth of it. Uh, today, as we speak, that number is just about 20% or maybe under one fifth of the total lending. You know, there was a time where uh, uh, they, it, it used to be, you know, with respect to lending, of course, uh, that it was Begani Shanti Me Abdullah Diwana, those kind of moments where anybody and everybody was out to lend, massive undercutting happening. Now, I think it's this, it's it's the phase of e-marriages without Nagada role in the wholesale lending business. So I think that is where we are. And therefore, the title is very appropriate, where it says transformative shift in this space, fixed income space. Uh, so let me jump up straight into some thoughts, you know, which I would like uh, our panelists to share with, uh, to begin with. Uh, uh, Pranav, I'll bring you in first. Uh, can you give us, um, you know, a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit flavor on uh, the kind of growth uh, that we are in today vis-a-vis -vis what we are likely to have and obviously some sort of a segmentation uh, for this space? Pranav, you're on mute. Sorry about this. Is this better? Yeah. Okay. So, you know, Lakshmi, I always say to people, you know, India as a nation, we've always been a capital-starved nation, right? Um, you know, and as a growing economy, capital plays a very important role. If we have to transcend this $5 trillion that we all talk about, capital is going to play a very critical role. Now, you know, if you look at institutional setup of this country, right, um, you know, banking system took us to a certain stage, NBFC took it to the next stage from a credit perspective. I think democratization of credit, um, where retail participation, institutional participation through structures such as AIFs is the next thing. You know, I, I, I think this kind of started to happen in the private equity space about a few years ago. Right. I think it's already happened in the public markets. As you know, the Indian capital is just coming in in rows. The demand side of the equation has always been there. Like I said, demand has always been there. It's a capital star nation. So we always need this capital. It's still, if you look at, there are a handful of players in this country today. Right. There are some institutional foreign players who play in this market. And there are some handful, you know, Indian institutions that play. But I think that is going to change over the next few years. Um, by definition, uh, credit is effectively an entire dilutive instrument, right? The minute you put that as a context, the use cases can be from the very early stage companies to the very late stage companies. And then you can go from the most secured to the most unsecured, right? Depends on where you want to play across these things. And I think that entire space is opening up uh, and thanks to some of the changes that we've just heard about and that is likely to shift. And I think all of us, We'll try to probably figure out which of those pockets to play, you know, where your strengths fly. Um, and, you know, so I, I think I think it's going to be an evolution. I, it's not so much as a, you know, drastic shift in the demand side because demand has always been there. I think supply has been the key constraint here. I think thanks to the regulatory oversight that this country has. And now I think with this uh, opening up of this, uh, you know, market for 
alternative funds like ours. I think we, we saw this shift even in the US when I was there, you know, we saw a shift from banking system to the funds in the, in the late 90s and following up till now, as you can see, even credit over globally is now a trillion, private credit is about trillion dollars. So I think that shift is likely to happen. No, absolutely. I agree with these points. And I think that's what we've been also tracking from a global landscape. Uh, but, you know, Heman, taking cue from what, uh, you know, Pranav just mentioned, uh, can private credit space actually say, uh, apna time a gaya? Uh, what are the key triggers that you see, you know, as a potential, uh, you know, heads up for growth in the space? Well, Lakshmi, the... Uh... If I can add, I think private credit is a large asset class globally. Okay. And we are seeing that asset class at an inflection point in India currently. Uh, just one point I want to uh, give to all the viewers. Uh, as an asset class, it's a very resilient asset class, you know, and the very interesting data in the last 10 years, the US equity markets have delivered compounded returns of 8% per annum. The top 25 percentile private credit asset managers have delivered 13% compounded returns, 8 versus 13. So here is an asset class which is globally very large, very resilient over a large period of market cycle. And now it's coming to India in a big way. I think triggers for any asset class when it needs to grow substantially, I think are three folds. One is their demand. There is massive demand. Why is this demand? As Pranav pointed out clearly, Banks are receding, mutual funds are receding, NBFCs are receding. This is an India phenomena. It's a global phenomena. Secondly, our investors' understanding to participate in this opportunity, I think in, investor interest is growing. Investor education is growing. I think, uh, and that always helps to an industry to grow. I think mutual funds in India truly took off when investors understood the benefits of mutual funds. I think in Indian investors are now understanding that alternative is an asset class that they should have in their portfolios. And thirdly, why does any asset class do well when the regulator puts forth a great framework? And I must give all credit to SEBI. I, I think the framework we have on AIS, the framework we have on alternatives is probably the one of the best in the world. We've evolved already on that front. So we've got a great combination. We've got a combination of the market growing. We've got a great combination of investors understanding this asset class and the regulator uh, also supporting this asset class in a big way. So the triggers are already in place. Is it an asset class which has done well over the last several decades internationally? The answer is yes. And if 13% dollar can be produced in US markets over 10 years, then just think of the opportunity in India. And that is the opportunity we want to showcase to investors. No, without a doubt, certainly uh, at 13% versus 8, definitely private credit ki kameez, 8% US equity se, ki kameez se safed zaroor hai. But I think, uh, you know, when you spoke about the kind of opportunities, when you spoke about the kind of uh, investors wanting to, you know, probably uh, take a pie of, uh, you know, this this particular cake called uh, the performing credit or private credit. Uh, Dawal, my question to you is, uh, how is the deal flow pipeline? I mean, we all know that there is a reasonable, robust demand for this segment uh, at a time when most uh, institutions are kind of vacating this space or maybe getting less active in this space. Uh, is there a good pipeline uh, of supply? Are you worried about uh, any sort of mispricing given the kind of strong demand that's there in the space? Yeah, so I, I think in terms of uh, overall demand, uh, uh, as uh, uh, other participants also highlighted, uh, that bank and NBFC kind of uh, supported this uh, uh, market uh, for a while, almost for a decade, but they have kind of withdrawn. And uh, in last phase, obviously, mutual fund is also now uh, uh, post uh, uh, the NBFC crisis. And some of those events have not been kind of too participative. So that way, uh, on a kind of a steady state, constant demand, of, uh, this segment obviously is getting a lot of uh, deals uh, to kind of choose from. And then entire spectrum obviously starts from the performing uh, uh, credit uh, oriented uh, space where typically you try to get into a, a company's rated, let's say a single A or triple B uh, uh, on a on an external rating scale with a certain specific situational requirement. And then it goes all the way up to 17, 18% when there is a special situation where uh, 
you are slightly away from cash flow however the kind of a return and exit would be through the asset sale or monetization and all so that entire spectrum uh, obviously we are witnessing a very uh, strong uh, kind of uh, uh, demand flow uh, obviously uh, every player is choosing their expertise and their segment uh, we being part of amc we are obviously more uh, uh, nearer to performing credit and that's where we have seen a lot of this mid market companies uh, either wanting a, 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 a kind of some cash flow based solution because of some certain cash flow mismatches or a higher growth or certain merger acquisition related uh, requirement or a promoter wanting to increase the stake and all so entire spectrum is uh, uh, kind of really throwing away good opportunities to uh, uh, kind of uh, stitch out transactions uh, and as uh, highlighted the bank end use restrictions uh, uh, similarly the nbfc is also the larger nbfc are coming under a lot of rbi scrutiny are kind of restricting them to participate in this uh, uh, space so you're so, not really citing demand and supply to be a big issue at least that is balanced that's yeah that's that's look uh, that's pretty balanced see last year also we saw almost uh, uh, the eni report 5 billion kind of uh, of deal flow so even if i uh, remove certain real estate kind of transactions still 3 3 and a half 4 billion kind of transactions are happening uh, uh, in the space which obviously supports uh, 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 the kind of fund raising also happening so i don't see too much of a challenge uh, in that sense. but you know pranav uh, you know moving uh, this discussion uh, you know i i i'm as i'm you know chatting with all of you all uh, i was just reminded of a statement made by trevor noah if you find the right balance between desperation and fear you can make people do anything and uh, why i'm bringing uh, this context is risk uh yes. while it's equally important to note that risk hai to ishq hai but the point is uh, is is there adequate risk framework when we are talking about growth explosion i keep hearing all of these uh, you know uh, terms every day and i'm sure all of you are doing the same thing do we have as an ecosystem an adequate risk framework to take care of this can you throw some light on that Right, absolutely. Uh, like a great question, and you know, I'll tell you. I think we are still at a very nascent stage in this uh, segment, in my opinion. Um, the mere fact that we all still talk about an absolute. Are we able to hear, uh, Prana? Uh, um, Uh, we've lost. Hi, sorry, sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, you're audible now, Prana. Okay. So, sorry, I let let me. Okay, great. L- let me repeat. No, I think we lost you again. I think we we've, we've lost him. But uh, Heman, can if I can bring you in, uh, Prana, are you audible? Uh, can you uh, hear I us can, now? Yeah. Yes, yes, my apologies. All right. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, sorry, please. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So you know, I think what I was trying to say is that look, I think we're at a very nascent stage. If you ask me on this whole, you know, if you ask me about private credit as a concept, I mean, the mere fact that we still talk about about returns in absolutes today is probably shows you that we still don't talk about risk and reward. I mean, credit is all about the spreads, right? I mean, at what spreads? I mean, I. it's it's interesting that when rates are 3 and 1/2% uh, savings we still talk about 15% returns when the rates are 7 and 1/2 8% savings we still talk about 15% returns that's not the way it should work right i mean that just shows so we still very nascent people are still talking about absolutes it is not about cost plus pricing it's risk based pricing so i think we you know you, you talk about this ecosystem you know the, the the risk and the reward in, in the system i think we will evolve i think like you rightly said there's so much demand and little supply in the sense that there are few players i think you still today can choose but if you have to scale you have to do 5x 10x from here i think i liken this to what private equity industry was 15 years ago right i, I think the ecosystem has to deepen i think more people have to be aware that these products are there i think solution mindset special you know you will have you know funds like us you know who started with saying look 
if everybody talks about credit can we do if it's all about anti dilution can we go to early stage companies and give a similar form of anti dilutive instrument while making sure that our risk is protected some people say look hey there is a great opportunity in the distress so i think solutions will emerge specializations will emerge but i think ecosystem has to go deeper i think today we are all i'll call it a little lazy because you know there's so much demand you can just pick and choose there are fewer people but i think over a period of time it will change and as competition comes in i think people will have to start talking serious about risk and reward going away from this absolute talking to saying that look for this risk this is the spread that i should be earning this globally credit talks like that globally credit doesn't talk 13 to 15% right it's all about the spread at the end of the day yeah so i think we need to rephrase that risk hai to ishq hai to risk adjusted return hai to ishq hai i think that is a more relevant uh, uh, terminology that our market participants should take home uh, but dhawal since we are on risk uh, you know i wanted to bring the safety element and since you know you've been part of uh, uh, the public debt space also uh, any thoughts any comparisons between how private credit is different versus the public debt yeah so obviously in terms of uh, profiling of the company uh, is uh, uh, obviously different because private market uh, you uh, so we actually identified um, almost 2000 odd companies uh, uh, with with a revenue size and ebitda and all so these companies typically uh, you'll require a significantly higher due diligence uh, because uh, a public market company generally more data is available well researched uh, from various research houses equity research everything is available on uh, then uh, when you kind of come to a private market uh, the due diligence uh, uh, requirement is significantly higher so that obviously is one aspect where uh, uh, the team's ability to kind of uh, uh, narrow down uh, on, on those aspect uh, how you kind of go about it uh, and uh, if you are part of a larger ecosystem whether you can use the ecosystem benefit uh, to kind of uh, get uh, those due diligence uh, uh, right that would be a very kind of a differentiating factor so one aspect is clearly a, a due diligence part of it secondly in terms of uh, uh, a structuring element uh, obviously uh, some of these companies require a hand holding uh, uh, because some of them may be participating for the first time uh, on on a certain these kind of transaction and all so promoter management and all kind of still requires a bit of a uh, this thing because at the end of the day let's say moving from a loan market to uh, instrument market itself is a, a bit of a transition uh, which warrants uh, much more discipline uh, on a company's part so i think those aspects are kind of evolving uh, companies are also kind of becoming uh, much more uh, sebi is obviously uh, coming out with uh, a regulation where the disclosure norms are becoming tighter even for a, a mid mid segment companies but these are i think uh, key differentiating factors when it comes to kind of a risk uh, for a private either let's say public debt so are you happy that you made your move to the private credit space or you were happier there <laughs> i am pretty happy and in fact uh, actually thing is like uh, when let's say i was earlier with the 80 agency so there you read a entire spectrum uh, from let's say a double b to triple a and all uh, suddenly when you come to mutual fund the space kind of really narrowed down uh, because the, the kind of instruments and the kind of issuers you target it uh, private credit gives you a much larger spectrum um, explore the credit at the fullest so that way that's a good space to be in <laughs> fair point uh, uh hemant uh, you know i know it's saturday but friday is usually there's a bollywood release and last weekend there was a movie called uh, adi purush have you seen the movie adi purush lakshmi unfortunately we haven't got the time but yes we'd love to see that <laughs> <laughs> all right okay i i seem to have a lot of time so yes i try to watch uh, first day last shows at least uh, if i'm not traveling but you know there was this uh, this dialogue created a lot of controversy and why i'm bringing this i'll come to you in a bit but there was this you know that lanka dahan scene in uh, adi purush uh, where uh, hanuman says you know kapda tere baap ka tel tere baap ka aag tere baap ka jalegi bhi teri basically it was with reference to lanka and that bap word got replaced with lanka subsequently now this is true for equities as an asset class you know you take the risk reward is yours downside is yours upside is yours now when it comes to the fixed income space uh, 
is this true number one that's my first question to you and second is uh therefore is it uh that aif as a vehicle tends to behave differently from a mutual fund uh, or nbfc and therefore the tolerance is higher uh, through the ai vehicle any any views on that himant lovely question uh lakshmi so i i think one of the reasons why some of these uh, instruments are moving to the aif as a vehicle is also because of the benefit of aif as a vehicle see mutual funds were open ended structures in the mutual funds world also and uh, lakshmi you've been a legend in the mutual fund world uh credits have done very well okay it was unfortunately the open ended nature of the scheme that actually caused damage because if if there are 10 investors everybody wants to redeem on a day no matter what you have to liquidate and at that time you don't get a price then you pay the price for it right so mutual funds are open ended structures nbfcs are short term liability funded structures and i think in an asset class when in 3 to 4 year credit when you do a 3 to 4 year credit transaction you need to have back to back asset liability right that is fundamentally very very important has credit done well in nbfcs answer is yes has credit done well in mutual funds answer is a thumping yes why are aifs more suited because the asset liability is matched these are closed ended structures the customer gives you money for a certain period of time and you invest for a certain period of time so fundamentally there is a benefit of being in this vehicle uh the other thing you know you were you were referring to the movie i think in credit uh and uh, since this is also part of investors just getting more used to credit i think credit portfolios should be viewed with a lot of diversification see all investing anyways is about cash flows right whether it's equity whether it's credit i think credit has to be done with cash flows closeness to cash flows because in the absence of cash flows it's all in the air the other thing that is supremely important in the business of credit is diversification the more you can diversify the lesser the the risk that you have to a single name and eventually i think that can save lanka dehen that can eventually save any any can one event go wrong answer is yes but if you are diversified i think you can reduce risks so that means uh, the state uh, again i'll bring another movie here satya prem ki katha that also you know there is this again very nice tagline which both the female and the male protagonist use saw takka so there is no saw takka in any asset class <laughs> so i think the message is loud and clear there cannot be a saw takka obviously even in the world of investments whether it's fixed income or equity so i think that's a point uh, which is very relevant to note uh, you know prana moving from risk and return uh, you know in terms of scale and size what what kind of size you think this industry can sustain yeah you know uh, i think like i said um, this is today a very shallow market we still are in a very uh, a sh- you know the the markets tend to be shallow if you even look at public markets right you know you have only a certain amount of coverage you know 200 250 companies coverage uh that that is out there right even in even in credit like i said you know most of our most of the lending today goes to some top corporates you know promoter financing you know stuff like this i think if you have to deepen and if you have to go size and scale the market has to deepen that is why i said you look back to private equity 15 years ago right this education not only on the supply side but on the demand side of why private credit you know why private equity why you should do it same way what is the risk if you take such private credit you should be you should be ready to be able to have the liquidity events for and the cash flows to be able to manage it if something goes wrong to be able to fall back on something i think the deepening of this ecosystem has to happen if you have to scale i think that is point number 1 i think one very important element is if the scale up has to happen from the supply side as in indian capital through aifs has to scale i think you know all of us have handled lot of clients over the last few years as we you know as aifs have grown and you know i must i see smiley because he was at the forefront of this um you, you know i think getting the right experience to our customers right because i mean think about this i i again i keep on going to private equity because we've seen this movie before you know you talk about movies right we've seen this movie before where private equity went through bad experience to our to the indian clients and everybody was like you know you know once bitten twice shy and i think this is where i think our discipline as a industry 
I think, you know, doing it the right way, educating the customers, making sure like him and rightly point about, you know, talking about diverse markets. I don't think it's that easy. Lakshmi, if you ask me if today, you know, let's say we are 17 billion, if I had to be 50 billion, uh, you know, can you get that kind of supply? Uh, I mean, can you get that kind of demand to put money to work? appropriately from a risk adjusted basis is going to be very difficult unless we deepen this market and i think ecosystem has to develop i also see today it's a really one-on-one -on -one market right i mean these are all bilateral trades globally a lot of this has moved towards secondary you know bond trading trade right where multiple people can come together you can diversify your own risk i issue i'm an i'm an issuer but then i should be able to parcel out the risk right and that will happen as the secondaries develop Again, go back to private equity today. I think 30-40% of private equity exists are secondaries. One fund sent yeah. to another. So I think over the next 5, 7, 10 years, I think all of these will, will surely develop as more and more people like us come in and develop this market. Absolutely. And the word here is gradual. You know, the, this this uh, industry is witnessing a gradual growth. Uh, it's not that lump sum monies are pouring in, money is coming at call. So I think that is the beauty. Let it grow. Uh, as they say, slow grow is always better. But, uh, you know, uh, Dhawal, uh, you know, Prana mentioned a very important point on the customer expectation. So, you know, uh, the question to you is, uh, is the customer like or the client or the investor uh, like uh, the uh, both side, uh, you know, heads kind of a story, you toss it either which way is uh, it's like, uh, you know, heads, you wins and tails, I lose kind of a concept. Is there an investor maturity for these kind of structures? Are they more evolved compared to what the public markets are offering? Yeah, I think uh, uh, when you uh, look at the, like, obviously, institutional investors understand this market well. Uh, because uh, over a period of time, they have seen different asset classes and all. Uh, uh, when we look at the family offices and uh, the wealth uh, platforms and all, there also we have kind of seen that people have now understood uh, the segmentation very well. That uh, uh, each, uh, each part of the, let's say, private credit uh, uh, offers a different risk profiling, uh, as obviously some of the participants highlighted. So they understand the kind of uh, risk uh, which is associated and then try to kind of schedule returns uh, is a concept which gradually is picking up. So let's say if it's a venture debt, it, it's a different kind of a risk uh, and return profiling is different. These are these, let's say, a performing credit, uh, which is kind of going at a certain rate near to cash flow kind of transactions. Uh, so I think uh, gradually people are kind of segments are getting well understood. Obviously, as an investor, general uh, thinking is to maximize the return. And uh, in this private market, obviously, people tend to compare uh, straight away, even though they are putting money into debt, uh, the comparison starts with equity. So some of those uh, kind of challenges uh, remain. However, things are evolving because uh, uh, their pool of cash flows are also increasing. There is asset allocation is happening at their end. And I think they have also understood the segments well, uh, that each segment comes with its own set of challenges and risk. See, ultimately, uh, Bhav Bhagwan hai, you know, so wherever there is a lure for returns, there is an investor calling and that's how the returns tend to act as a magnet. And, uh, you know, Hemant, I again take this cue from your, uh, you know, you, the statement you made earlier that uh, we've seen, uh, you know, 13% kind of returns uh, in, in uh, the offshore space in uh, fixed income in this in this asset class versus an 8 percentage kind of a return over long term in equities. Now, uh, that leads me, uh, you know, to a feeling that it's, uh, you know, Gora Tera Gao Bada Pyara. So, you know. Is, is global performance, if you take that compared to, and they obviously have a long history versus in India's limited, uh, you know, market uh, history of performance. Do you see any contrast? Do you see anything starting which you think is worth sharing here? So Lakshmi, see, in my earlier Aftar, I had the fortune of working with some of the largest global pension funds and insurance companies. Uh, global markets are evolved, Okay. Uh, are there more different structures? Are there more transparency, more uniformity to structures? I think answer is yes. Having said that, if you Apple compare Apple to Apple, I think how private debt works is 
these are bilaterally negotiated debt contracts and covenants i think what investors should know public versus private the most important difference for us is that in a private debt deal you can guide the outcome through your covenants you can guide the outcome and covenants add safety to a transaction right that is the core of private versus public in india when i look at it i i think the covenants that indian debt transactions have are significantly tightened yet and that is a that is a place which is a very good place to be we are fortunate currently because you know this is a market where demand for credit is far higher than supply why is demand high because we live in a country which is 3 and 1/2 lakh crores of gdp right and the supply of money is less plus we are getting covenants which are far tighter so currently i would say this is a lenders market as of now and in credit lakshmi you've been in credit markets i i think as long as a lender has an upper hand i think fundamentally credit is in a decent zone so uh, macro perspective this is still a lenders market with decently covenanted structures which is very very important uh, having said that i think the most crucial time I, and i said I, i think as pranav explained i think markets will evolve secondaries will take place funds will mature and there will be a little bit of overcrowding and that is when investors should distinguish between whom to do credit with and whom not to do credit with fundamentally credit is about cash flow there is only one word that comes to credit cash flow you have to have cash flow if you don't have cash flow then it's not a credit instrument it's probably an equity instrument no so therefore if it's 13% or kind of a dollar return if the same uh, fpi comes to india what kind of dollar returns you think he or she should expect See, Lakshmi, if I do simple maths, if it's thirteen percent dollar, and you assume three and a half percent dollar rupee depreciation, so it should technically be sixteen and a half percent rupee returns. Now India is still in a nascent phase. Now sixteen and a half percent rupee, and you can take anybody's take, is a sixteen and a half percent rupee sixteen to twenty percent should be the zip code for private credit in India. Logically, going with U.S. market comparison. and if i also have to give you one more perspective you just look at it it was 13% dollar private credit 8% snp the spread as pranav said between i mean in this case it was 5% spread between equities and private credit india equity delivers 13 12 14 you can take whichever zip code number 12 to 14% right even if we add a 5 6% spread on indian equity returns the maths works out very similar I think sixteen to twenty percent. If you add a spread from equity market, sixteen to twenty percent. If you add dollar rupee depreciation to U.S. funds, so sixteen to twenty is a very logical expectation of at least people to expect from funds in India in this space. So brilliant. So that's what basically the one line message from what uh, Heman says is that. Uh, वर्माला मेरे हाथ में है मैं लेंडर हूं नाउ आई विल डिसाइड हूं आई एम गोइंग टू गार्डलैंड एंड देयर इज अ बी लाइन ऑफ इश्यूअर्स सो क्लियरली इफ यू सी देयर इज अ कॉन्फ्लुएंस एज आई कॉल इट द त्रिवेणी संगम ऑफ डिमांड ऑफ सप्लाई ऑफ अ रेगुलेटरी सपोर्टिव एनवायरमेंट and uh, you don't need to go to allahabad to witness the triveni sangam you need to actually come into the you know private credit space and uh, you know listening to all uh, the panelists out here uh, i am invoking the bollywood again in me which reminds me you know of this very uh, uh, famous uh, or very iconic dialogue from the movie diwar and uh, I'm sure all of you, and Hemant, you would also would have seen this movie Diwar. I'm sure you can't say I don't have time. I I I, I have to see it, Lakshmi. <laughs> Otherwise, oh I should God. be banned from this show. <laughs> <laughs> no, so please do it. In that, there is this dialogue which says, "Aaj mere paas bank balance hai, property hai." So I'm just tweaking it to say, "Aaj mere paas equity hai, gold hai, property hai, bank balance hai. Kya hai tumhare paas?" and then the investors have mere paas have private credit fund so i think that is the bullish note on which we depart uh, thank you so much uh, for a very patient uh, listening and a fantastic panel uh, over to you ashwarya very much uh, miss lakshmi i think the way you uh, steered this session was truly engaging very interesting thank you once again and uh, i thank our panelists as well uh, thank you to the esteemed panelists uh, mr dhawal patel mr hemant daga and mr pranav parekh